Picture this, a dimly lit room, the air thick with anticipation as the flickering screen bathes you in an eerie, almost palpable glow. The year is 1978, and you find yourself on the edge of your seat, suspended between curiosity and a slight unease. You're about to embark on a journey into the mesmerizing world of the movie coma. That first encounter, the initial glimpse of the chilling storyline, and the unforgettable characters etched into your memory. Perhaps it was the haunting suspense, or maybe the uncanny feeling that it could all happen in real life. In that moment, you became an unwitting participant in a psychological thriller that left a lasting imprint on the annals of cinematic history. But the beauty of coma lies not only in those spine-tingling moments. There's more to this classic that may have eluded you, a web of fascinating details woven into its fabric. So, let's pull back the curtain and explore the random facts that illuminate the intriguing world of this film. Prepare to delve deeper into the heart-pounding mystery, the remarkable performances, and the secrets that make Coma a timeless masterpiece. It's a journey through time, a twist of fate, and a touch of Hollywood magic all waiting to be unraveled. Welcome to the intriguing world of Coma. In an interview with Millimeter Magazine, the director of the 1978 movie Coma, Michael Crichton, shared insights into the film's concept. Crichton stated, This is a story that contains many elements of reality. The fear people have of surgery, the fear of dying at the hands of your doctor, phobias about hospitals. Those are very real fears, and so to exaggerate them would not be much fun. My idea was to put the picture together in such a way that the fears are put in a safe perspective and can be enjoyed as scares, without awakening deeper and more real anxieties. Crichton's words shed light on the film's approach to tapping into genuine fears without pushing them to extremes. Coma aimed to resonate with the audience's common apprehensions related to surgery, hospitals, and medical professionals. It strived to strike a balance between delivering spine-tingling moments and maintaining a sense of safety for viewers. This perspective from the director gives us a deeper understanding of the film's intent and how it sought to captivate audiences through its depiction of relatable fears. It highlights the careful approach taken in crafting the suspense and horror elements of Coma. The film Coma, released in 1978, remains a notable entry in the thriller genre, and Michael Crichton's approach to storytelling played a crucial role in its success. No music score in the film is heard until the 45-minute mark. In the 1978 movie Coma, directed by Michael Crichton, there is a notable absence of music for the first 45 minutes of the film. This creative decision is a departure from the typical use of music in movies, where it often plays a significant role in setting the tone and enhancing the viewer's emotional engagement. Director Michael Crichton, known for his work in both the literary and cinematic realms, made a deliberate choice to eschew a musical score for the initial part of the film. This decision serves to create a stark and unsettling atmosphere, emphasizing the eerie silence of the hospital setting and intensifying the sense of unease experienced by the protagonist, Dr. Susan Wheeler, played by Genevieve Bujold. The absence of music in the early part of Coma forces the audience to focus on the dialogue, ambient sounds, and the visual aspects of the film. This deliberate silence heightens the tension and draws attention to the unfolding mystery, making the sudden introduction of a musical score at the 45-minute mark all the more impactful. In a cinematic landscape where music often takes a prominent role, the choice to delay its inclusion in coma serves as a testament to the film's unique storytelling and Michael Crichton's directorial vision. In the 1978 movie Coma, there's a striking image of a coma clinic where people are suspended by wires attached to their wrists and ankles. This image was used in the movie's posters. Actor Michael Douglas once said the film had elements of love story and the hospital with suspense elements akin to an Alfred Hitchcock movie. It's worth noting that the director, Michael Crichton, wrote novels under the pseudonym Michael Douglas, which combined his first name and his brother's. Additionally, two versions of the coma clinic scenes were filmed, one with semi-naked patients and another with them covered up for television screenings. That's a glimpse into some intriguing aspects of the 1978 movie Coma. It's a film that combined medical intrigue with suspense, leaving a memorable impression on its viewers. In 1978, the movie Coma hit the big screen, marking Ed Harris' feature film debut. 
The film, produced by Martin Ehrlichman, was based on a novel, and it had a unique goal to tap into people's primal fears of hospitals, much like Jaws did for the ocean and sharks. Ehrlichman believed that hospitals could evoke a stronger phobia because one can't always avoid the necessity of going into a hospital, unlike choosing to avoid the water. When adapting the source novel for the screen, several changes were made. The central protagonist, Dr. Susan Wheeler, went from being a feminist blonde medical student in the book to a brunette second-year surgical resident in the film. The feminist content from the novel was trimmed down in the movie, with only some arguments between the main couple surviving. Additionally, the medical institute's location shifted from the city in the book to an outer suburb in the film. Coma took a gripping look at the fears associated with hospitals and surgery, delivering a thriller that resonated with audiences in 1978. Ed Harris' introduction to the film world and Martin Ehrlichman's unique approach to tapping into primal fears set the stage for a movie that still lingers in the minds of viewers today. In the 1978 movie Coma, an interesting tidbit involves the actor Tom Selleck, who played the role of a surgery patient named Sean Murphy. Tom Selleck would later collaborate with the film's director, Michael Crichton, on the movie Runaway in 1984. This connection highlights the industry relationships that often lead to future collaborations in the world of filmmaking. Another intriguing aspect of the film is the breach of doctor-patient confidentiality by Dr. Moreland, a psychiatrist, when reporting to Dr. Harris. Dr. Moreland reveals sensitive information about Dr. Wheeler, including her romantic attachment to Dr. Bellows. This breach of trust adds to the movie's overall theme, suggesting that something is amiss within the hospital setting. It's also worth noting that Farrah Fawcett missed out on the role of Dr. Susan Wheeler in coma due to her commitment to Charlie's Angels in 1976. Casting decisions can have a significant impact on the final outcome of a film, and in this case, the role went to a different actress, creating an interesting what-if scenario. These insights into the cast and behind-the-scenes dynamics of Coma provide a deeper understanding of the film's history and production. It's always fascinating to uncover the connections and decisions that shape the movies we know and love. As we draw the curtains on this cinematic journey through the enigmatic realms of the 1978 movie Coma, we invite you to ponder the profound tapestry it has woven within your cinematic soul. This medical thriller, a captivating symphony of suspense and intrigue, has etched indelible imprints on the minds of those who have ventured into its labyrinthine corridors. What mysteries did it unravel for you? Did the chilling atmosphere resonate with your deepest fears? Or perhaps, the character's journey stirred your empathy and understanding. Whatever your experience may be, we encourage you to explore the contours of your connection with Coma. The power of cinema lies not only in its ability to entertain, but also in its capacity to touch our innermost sensibilities. This 1978 classic, directed by Michael Crichton, has been an instrumental part of many lives. It's a film that sparks conversations, nostalgia, and the thrill of revisiting its narrative depths. Share your fondest memories, your most profound reflections, or your lingering questions about coma with us. Engage with fellow cinephiles in a spirited discussion. Let the echoes of this remarkable movie continue to reverberate in your thoughts, connecting you to the larger tapestry of film enthusiasts who appreciate its brilliance. Thank you for embarking on this cinematic odyssey with us and sharing your thoughts. Your time and interest are greatly appreciated. Keep the cinematic flame alive, and until our next exploration, keep the reels turning.